Hello everybody, welcome to Coco's Crochet. I'm Litza and today is our podcast number 105. Before we get stuck into all the yarny goodness and all the joy that it brings us and we bring to each other, I just want to touch on a community matter that has really affected some of our family, friends here, um, their immediate families themselves and their friends. So I'm referring to the hurricanes, uh, Helene and Milton. I cannot believe the devastation they are causing to our friends and I just pray and hope that you're all keeping very well and very safe and out of harm's way. I know that it's come past, um, you know, one after the other. So the devastation, you couldn't really get past it or recover from it before the next one came along. I don't even imagine what it'd be like to be stuck in a hurricane. I've been very blessed that I've never experienced it and I pray I never do. But for those of you that have and are, we're sending huge you know prayers out for you and i know that a lot of you have been affected part of our community because i've been seeing emails receiving emails and obviously there's so much on youtube of everybody that you know we hang out with so once again you know sending out healing prayers and i hope that you know you're all keeping safe that's the main thing and that you recover from the devastation if it's caused any to your family um, or your friends, you know, um, that you recover quickly. I, I can't even, like I said, begin to imagine how you're feeling. And I know that, you know, words can't heal, but they can help just knowing that we're all thinking of you. Um, yeah, just take care, everybody. It is a horrible, horrible time. And um, I just wish that it hadn't happened. That's, you know, something I guess we can hope that it doesn't happen again. Mother Nature can be very kind and sometimes very cruel. So take care of yourselves, everybody. Now, we're here today because it's another Thursday. It's the 10th of October, 2024. And we have the opportunity to get together, hang out as a community and, you know, showcase some of your makes. I'll let you know what I've been up to. And, you know, just talk a bit, a little bit about family or, you know, life as well. I do have a few things to get through and a few upcoming announcements to make. Not huge ones, just reminders, I guess, more so at this stage. Some announcements will be coming at the end of the year, which isn't very far away at all right guys so as always we're going to start off yet another week with tile of the week thursday blanket edition now i'm happy to report that there has been some progress so before we get started though let's give credit where credit is due our friend sam over at manfors makes she received this book here 100 crochet tiles in happy mail in the July of 2022 and she embarked on a journey of completing each and every tile and along the way a lot of us joined in so if you put in the hashtag tile of the week Thursday you'll see when and who jumped on board and just made this organic cow such a fun journey together and we've had so many cheerleaders along the way that we couldn't go wrong yes there were some tears along the way there was some you know some cruisy tiles but along the way the whole time I have to say the best thing was I learned so much about myself about different techniques or different styles of crochet including um, tapestry mosaic intarsia which I think is very similar to tapestry we did different style of tiles not just the square and it was actually a lot of fun I made about 72 or 73 because I jumped on at tile number 25 now for each and every tile and I'll just pop this book down I use my marvel eight ply yarn and I did commit to using only so I've got an itch here from all the fibers that are surrounding me and it is quite warm in here so I committed to using seven colors from my stash because I had quite a few of these and look, I'm down to the very bare minimum here. So this is all eight ply or DK weight yarn in various colors, as you can see. It is so beautiful. Now, the majority of the colors, I still have quite a few balls left over. And when I say quite a few, maybe two or three of each, except for the white. I have a lot of that because I had purchased a big bag of 12 when it was on sale. But look at this, guys. With the pink, I got down to this. And this little tiny ball here so how lucky was that because this pink is very very hard to find I do have other pinks and I would have substituted of course but I was just really really happy to see that I got down to the last bit of the blanket 
and I made it, which was great. So let me just pop this yarn down here so I can talk to you about what I did to the blanket and what we need to do to it before it's finished because the goal is to get it done before Christmas. And I think as it's nearly the middle of October, we might just reach that target together. So thank you for cheering me along. It's been amazing. I can't wait to bring you, you know, what I've done to it every week. So I've actually managed to pop on a border. And let me show it to you up nice and close. And, and I'll tell you why I've still got stitch markers in there. So here it is here, guys. So I did one row of half double crochet in the white. And then I added a half double crochet, like a modified moss stitch for all of the other colours. So you'll see there's all the colours are in there that are in all of the tiles. Now, the reason why I have all of these little stitch markers still on here, and I wanted to show them to you, is because... I wanted to make sure that every side had the same number of stitches. It was very, very important because remember, these are all different size tiles. I had to add some white around some of them to make them, you know, for the panels that I was creating each and every week to make sure that they fit. But I hadn't actually counted each and every stitch because for some of them I would um, like double you know, decrease in some areas to make them fit in that panel. So I thought it best to actually count them. And what I did is in increments of 10 stitches, I went all the way around one side and then I did it for both the long side and the short side. On the longer side, I did it every 20, um, 20 stitches. And as it works out, the longer sides actually had equal amount of stitches. I have written it down somewhere. It was around the 200 and... 27 marks something like that and then the shorter sides or the width of it it was out by 10 stitches which made it very easy because um that was around 197 stitches something like that so apologies for not having the exact number for you but that's okay you get the idea i can give you those statistics next time so all i did guys see where i've got two stitch markers I increased there so every second stitch I increased and that way I had equal number of stitches on each side so that stretched out one side a tiny tiny bit just by 10 stitches to make it look perfect well as perfect as can be all the sides are straight bar one because it's got a bit of a funny shape tile I don't know if I can see it here to show you is it that one no but I will lay it out on the floor again and take another photo but I'm actually so happy with it. Now, I've got the huge task of sewing in all these ends. Now, you can't see them from that far away, but well, maybe you can. Everywhere where you see a tile connecting to another one, there is some yarn hanging out there. So that is going to be, I think, the biggest job of all. But I am going to tackle it, even if it takes a few weeks before it's finished. And each week I'll let you know what we're up to. So I'm going to pop this blanket down over there and with all this yarn. Lucky I thought to um, attach it with all the white because that's the one that I have the most of. And still has a little bit in my stash. Oh my gosh, it's so nice to see that that's done up until that stage. It's just amazing. Now, along the way, I've been creating a few other projects with the tiles as well. Some that didn't fit into the blanket, including a cushion with a squares, four squares. I'm endeavouring to make another cushion with a hexagon. So watch this space. That is still to come. But I also made a little wall hanging. Now, some of you may have already seen this, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But there we go there. I really like this tile here and I just didn't want it to go to waste. So that will adorn one of my walls somewhere in the yarn room and I think it is very, very pretty. And as you can see, all the colours that are in those squares appear in the little decoration here and in the tassels. So that was a fun project and part of the Tile of the Week Thursday, which, you know, another tile that I've been able to use. So that's been wonderful. I'm so excited that we're getting near the end of those tiles. I can, I can see them behind you and there is a stash there or a little pile just for the hexagon cushion cover. And then there's a few more like that one lying around that I'm not sure what I'm going to do with. At the very least, I can look at them and enjoy how pretty they are. So that's our Tile of the Week Thursday blanket edition for the week. So I better tick that one off. Now, the best part now, I get to showcase all your makes. 
Now, as I said, it is quite warm in here, guys, because um, I'm still on school holidays and it is the afternoon. And today has been a really beautiful, warm day after having a couple of miserable, cloudy, drizzly days. So I'm very happy that I can sit here in the sunshine for you. You might see a ray of um, light coming through later on. I'm not sure where we're at exactly with the time. It is after 4 p.m. here in Sydney, Australia at the time of recording. Now, let's get on to your makes. Oh my goodness, wait till you see this little guy. He is so adorable. I absolutely love him. Now, this is made by our friend Nat. He is so cute. And she says that the designer is um, at Essie, E -S -S -I -E, Birdies, B I R D I E S. And she's used all her Flinders cotton yarn. And Nat tells us this is her favourite project that she's made to date. He is so cute. Look at his pom pom necklace. So, so gorgeous. Thank you so much for sending him in to us, Nat. I absolutely love him. <laughs> when I saw him, he just made me smile. Now, our friend Josephine has been very, very busy. Let me just zoom in on this. I always say the beauty of the iPad is that I can zoom in onto this beautiful work, all of the beautiful pieces that are sent to us. Now, this has been made for a friend. So a friend of Josephine's asked her to make this for her, which is a king-size blanket. The pattern is called Grandma Spiked My Ripple Blanket and the designer is Darlisa Riggs, R-I-G-G-S. But there is a YouTube tutorial by Glenda at The Creative Grandma. Now, the friend requested a shiny, and let me see if I can see it, I'll zoom in. I can't really see it very well, but there is a shiny ribbon border, which the friend wanted. And I'm sure that it makes it look extra, extra pretty. And Josephine said it wasn't too hard to add it. She did use a 5.5 millimeter clover or more hook, red heart yarn, which is a four weight yarn or a 10 ply, uh, which is 100% acrylic. And in um, me the measurement is 90 inches wide and 70 inches long. So it is a beautiful. What a great catch. A beautiful size blanket. I'm sure your friend will love it, Josephine. And that would have been a mammoth job, I imagine. You know, a king size bed is huge. Now, Josephine is also participating in the um, hashtag Amigurumi World Tour Cal uh, 2024, hosted by Cassandra over at Craftably Ever After. And she's caught up on some of her makes. So let me just zoom in on them a little bit, make them a little bit bigger for you. And she's made two eggs. She's made a peach. In the back there, you can see a mug, the blueberry, the strawberry, an onion, and a little pig. How gorgeous are they? Absolutely love them. Now, Josephine does tell us that she used Stylecraft Special DK from her stash to create all of these, but the peach, the peach is in a four weight yarn, 3.5 millimeter clover or more hook. And aren't they gorgeous? I like the display of the eggs in the air card, egg carton. I had the same idea too, Josephine, but I haven't made my eggs yet, so we've yet to see mine. <laughs> so they were Josephine's make. Thank you so makes. Thank you so much for sending them in. And you've well and truly caught up on that cow. Well done. Now our friend Lisa once again has made some of her famous and beautiful amigurumi. Let me zoom in on this little pink moth. How cute is he? Or she. So this is Prospero, the pink moth. There we go. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to make it nice for you without all the lights in the way. And she's also made a pumpkin. So let me enlarge that as much as I can. How awesome is that? Perfect for the fall or autumn season up in the northern hemisphere or coming up to Halloween. And these were patterns from the Crochet Now magazine. I'm guessing the most current issue. We're about five months behind here. And um, Lisa used a blend of cotton and an acrylic yarn and her three millimeter clover hook. So thank you so much again, once again, for sending in your beautiful amigurumi to us, Lisa. Oh my goodness, I'm losing all my papers like this end. And our friend Sandy, Aussie Sandy, she is in love with the little donuts from the hashtag crochet donut cow 2024 hosted by our friend sally over at nanny moon's crochet and she made a little snail oh my goodness i love the way you decorated his shell now she does tell us and there's another photo that she's oh, look at his little face wait till you see him 
I'll enlarge him as much as I can. Oh my goodness, look at that face. Now Sandy does tell us that she gave him a little tail because she just thought he looked a little bit funny without it. And she's also made, oh my goodness, look at this gorgeous little lovey here. And here we go, it's a little panda. And Sandy has actually crocheted the little panda as well and the little lovey blanket. Now this comes from a written pattern that um, Aussie Sandy has, she said, and she just doesn't know who the designer is. So it was a handwritten pattern. That is so cool. He is so adorable. And I love his little blue collar. Did you guys see that? So, so sweet. So thank you so very, very much, Aussie Sandy, and everybody else for sending in your beautiful makes this week. You've all been very, very busy and very, very creative, as always. I absolutely love it. Oh, you know, more things to add to our crochet to-do list, right, guys? Okay, now, speaking of the um, cow that our friend Cassandra over at Craftably Ever After is hosting, I'll talk to you a little bit about the books that we're getting all the patterns from and what I made for you this week. So this book here, Whimsical Stitches, which I say this every week, I do believe a lot of you have this book in your libraries by Lauren Espy. It's got about 31 or 33, something like that, patterns in here. And what Cassandra decided to do about, oh, I'd say at least three months ago now, she had one of these books and then she bought two more and sent them around the world. One all around the USA and one which we're calling the International Book, which is going from Denmark through Europe, UK. I think that's where it's at at the moment. And then it's going to make its way down to New Zealand and eventually to Australia. And we are going to create a few more things from it. And I'm lucky last on the list. And I always say, I hope I don't get a, get a pattern that has too much sewing. But whatever it is, I'm going to have to make it right, guys. It's the last one in the book. So I'm very, very excited for that to happen. But in the meantime, I still need to catch up on about three or four um, things. I think I need to make a little pig. I know I've got to make some eggs and I can't think of what the other thing is off the top of my head, but I did make the daisy. So let me show you the daisy in the book. So there is a sunflower and a daisy to make. They're two separate items. We didn't have to make the daisy as such, but I made it for another reason and I'll tell you in a moment. So there they are there. <coughs> Excuse me, got a frog in my throat. <coughs> so this little daisy, <laughs> I'll show you mine. He is very cute. He's, you know, a few petals short, but you know me, I can't, can't um, sew to save my life. So I just thought I'd stop at that. But it did turn out very, very sweet. This is a terracotta pot. And this is what it looks like on the back. And I actually used some peppercorns to replace, you know, those pellets that you get, I guess, that's, is that the word of like, you know, fertilizer? that we can put on our indoor plants. <clears throat> well, we've done that in the past, but I didn't have any of those, so I put that on. Now, if you want more information on this one, you'll have to go and watch our video that I'll refer to in a moment if you already haven't seen it. But this was a lot of fun to make. There is a dowel in here or a piece, like a stick, um, not a stick, like a dowel. So um, a rod, I should say. And I didn't think originally when I read the um, pattern, I almost said recipe, I didn't think that I would use one, but that would have been really silly because this rod or dowel, this thing will never fall down. This would be perfect for doll making for the next, I imagine. So that's going to be something that I'm going to put in my repertoire. You know what else would be good for dolls? And maybe some of you have already used it. If you have any corks from um, bottles of wine and things like that, they would be pretty good to put down a uh, throat as well, or like the neck of a doll. Keep that in mind, guys. So if you have any corks, save them. So I'm just going to pop that up here for now, out of the way so I don't knock it over. So that was my make for the hashtag Amigurumi World Tour 2024. If you put that hashtag in, you'll see all the YouTube creators that are joining in. And if you go to Cassandra's blog, she has a from two pages and every single person from all around the world that has made any of the pieces or all of them, um, she is putting them in there so we can see where and who is making them, which is pretty awesome, I think. Now, our friend um, Sally, as we said, she has her own cowl at the moment and it's the crochet donut, crochet donut 
Cal 2024 and she's using this book here Crochet Donut Buddies which again a lot of you might have in your collection I didn't so I bought this book and the Whimsical Stitches books just to participate in these cows not only to support our friends you know we all love a cow it's that community feel but also to improve my amigurumi skills and I am learning an awful lot about myself I used to think it was all about the crochet but it's actually about the sewing that I need to improve more so than anything else so this book here every week our friend Sally she has a huge drawstring bag that she's made and inside there are big ball colored balls and each ball when she draws one out per week has a donut on it for us to make now this week she drew out I think this one will be very popular with a lot of our friends I know that Aussie Sandy has already made it so I hope you you send it in to Sally she would love that and I do know that Kristen from K and K crochet would love this one this is the Highland cow now I don't have all the exact same colors that you need but I guess it doesn't really matter it's a donut after all so this little Highland cow, it tells us that it's a three donut rating, so three out of five. And it says that it's three, that's the difficulty rating. I don't think it's going to be that difficult. I'll show you what I've done so far. But compared to some others, I, I would have probably given this a two, says she who hasn't even tried to sew on the pieces that I need to sew on. Now, the fun thing about these donuts, and I do have a little collection happening, and I hope to catch up on all of them, if not most of them, is that little children can actually play with them and they can do like, they can actually make stories up with them. They can use them like I imagine if you've got like, let's say Old MacDonald had a farm and you've got a storybook, you can use these donuts to, play, you know, um, to use as the animals in there. They're used as memory games, counting games would be a great one. So I won't be giving them to children under the age of five to play with. And I'm actually gluing on some goggly eyes. That's where I was going with that, guys, because you can either sew them on, the eyes embroider them on, or you can actually use safety eyes. It's totally up to you. Now, I'm using for all of my donuts my Spot Saver yarn, which is this gorgeous yarn here. It is a 10-ply yarn or a worsted weight or a number four. And I absolutely love this yarn. The only thing I don't love about it is that the colours, I don't have as many colours as you um, would in say a red heart the selection in red heart or a premier basics um, parents simply soft I'm not sure if it's similar to this or that one might be a bit thinner I'm just trying to think out loud the color selection isn't as great but you make it work and I actually love these colors and I'm thinking you know a caramel colored highland cow is what it's going to be so over here I've got the start of it so I've got the base and I've got the little um, icing. So the icing actually has some drips on it. So all I need to do now is make the little horns, the ears, and the little muzzle or the nose. And then I'm pretty much done, guys. So this does take me a while, though. I have been timing myself lately. And this is about 50 minutes. And I think this was about 35, 40 minutes. So even though it isn't a big, like big pieces, oop, <laughs> dropped it, big pieces to crochet or too many stitches it does still take some time maybe less for others but that's how long it takes for me and because it is a worsted weight yarn I do use a four millimeter hook with it which makes it a little bit easier on my hands which is wonderful so they're the two cows that I'm participating in at the moment that are amigurumi and I am trying to catch up and it will be wonderful when I do that because it'd be nice to actually say that I've made everything if not most things out of this book because I almost got that done with the Toll of the Week Thursday book but you know, there's still about you know 27 odd that I haven't made and that's okay now my goddaughter is going to have this little baby that we're waiting for very very soon and I need to finish the star blanket for her so I'll talk about that in a moment but I did manage to complete the lovey because I couldn't wait so I'll show you the yarn that I've used in the blanket in just a moment but we're dog people as you know and she's already got two little puppies at home so I thought the baby deserved one of her very own and I did make this beautiful beautiful lovey now the reason why it's purple and green is because they're my goddaughter's favorite colors and that's the theme for the baby nursery or the baby's room so here he is here with his little waggly tail he is so cute and his eyes are they're not um 
safety eyes they're just embroidered on so that's really good and this is so super soft guys this is one of those like velvet type yarns but i'll show you the yarn that i actually used let me pop him down there so some of you may remember that i purchased this yarn a few months ago it is the vera moda vera aries and it's 100 percent polyester and it does have a very pretty sparkle but it's not a thick yarn it's quite thin i think it recommends either a four or five millimeter hook so I doubled it up and I used a seven millimeter hook with that one. And then on the green side, because you can see the white through it, I used the same Moda Vera Aries yarn. And then I teamed it up with this valuable tiny treasures. And this is a very pretty yarn as well. And this one with a sparkle in it actually made for a very pretty blanket. And of course, the pattern that I used is from Zelda NRJ3. Um, Z, she does an amazing pattern as you know all you need is a hair elastic work around that and the beauty is if you're not familiar with these um, loveys is that they actually come off and you can wash them and then pop them back on I am actually thinking about maybe making another one or two for her so that when she takes it off um, she's got one to pop back onto the little um, toy or use it on other toys so you might see another couple of lovies before the baby arrives that would be great wouldn't it so that's that one there excuse me so let me pop all this yarn out of the way so i can show you where i'm up to on the star blanket so i'm making an 11 point star blanket free pattern on the premiere website and i'm how many rows away i'm halfway through row eight so i've got to do 12 so four and a half rows before i actually finish the blanket now and then I just have to do one row, which is like a border. I haven't even looked at that, but I'm sure that it doesn't take very long at all. And here it is, guys. This is folded in half. How beautiful is that looking? Look at it up close. I love this royal purple color. And this is the third ball that I've only just started. And I've got another ball if I need it. So I'm guessing I might have to dip into the fourth ball because as you go, as it gets grows bigger and bigger, the rows get longer and longer so you need more and more yarn so it does take quite a while to get around each row but isn't it gorgeous i cannot wait to finish it so hopefully next week i'll be able to show it to you completed because as i said that baby is coming to us asap i think before the end of this month truth be told so that's the star blanket and the lovey that i destined for my goddaughter's little baby girl cannot wait to meet her now I've also been very busy this week making some wall hangings and I'm actually very proud of them. And let me tell you, if you want more information on the wall hangings and a few other pieces that I'm going to show you, and if you haven't already watched um, my video, how much can I crochet in 10 hours? Please go and watch it because it all refers to this, sorry about the noise, this pack here that I purchased and all of the pieces in here and what I could make with them in a 10 hour period. And I've got so much to show you this week because of that. So I'm not going to give you all the details about the patterns and the yarn and the hooks and all of that in case you've already watched that video. But if you haven't, please go and do so. I think you will enjoy it because I really enjoyed bringing it to you. It was one of the best challenges that I've done. So here is the first wall hanging. So, oh, actually, the Toll of the Week Thursday um, square was the first one. And these are wis wisteria leaves. I can't say it properly don't they look great i actually love this wall hanging i just need to put that you know that bit there the string bit to hang it and then it can go up somewhere on the wall and then i made this one here i absolutely love it this is made with three wooden rings and it is another wall hanging and i've put a little photo of coco in there i'm not sure what i'll put in the other two but for now, that's a beautiful start, I thought. And that is a very simple one, just using three different size wooden rings, which was great. And then again, from that same um, collection of, you know, hardware, I call it from that kit, I made, a, of course, I made a towel ring. Love that one. I made a little octo teether for a baby especially for a preemie baby or a newborn baby and then i made this little angel now oops she was way off now this is going to be great for very soon christmas will be here we're just going to get through halloween and then we're going to start on christmas and i think this will be part of the makes that i'll make this year as well she is so sweet right 
so like i said if you haven't seen that video please go and do so highly highly recommend it now oh, as you know or most of us know october we usually are made aware or we talk about breast cancer so breast cancer awareness month last year you might remember those of you that have been here for a while that i made this lovely beanie so it's got the ribbons and it's in pink and white and at the time i thought well the following year being this year oh my goodness it's already here that i would try to make a scarf and that's what i tried to do now i don't know if some of you have already made a scarf with the ribbons and if you have please tell me which one you've made i tried to make the and i've got it here just the beginning of it but i am going to tweak it so of course i used pink yarn and i want to incorporate some white in there once again just the spot saver usa style 10 ply 100 acrylic yarn and as you can see here there's the ribbons there now i've pinned it because i'm hoping it'll stretch it out a bit this pattern here is by nastasia and her and she does a beautiful job i'm not poo-pooing her her um ribbons they're actually 15 chains but i reduced them to 10 because they were just too floppy i thought and weren't sitting right she does use a slightly smaller hook i used a four and a half millimeter i think she uses a three and a half millimeter maybe that had something to do with it but i did reduce the length of the ribbons and it seemed to work out a bit better but i'm just not happy with the sides when you don't pin it it actually um goes in a little bit compared to the top because obviously there's not enough stitches holding that there were enough soldiers on the ends so i'll probably remake this i'll pull it apart now that i have an idea how it works because it will be very very pretty um and then add some half double crochets on either side and some more down the bottom just to give it some body or some strength some foundation to keep it nice and straight and then i will incorporate some white in it somehow as well so the way that you make this scarf is you make two halves because when you drape it over your neck you want the ribbons to be facing the right way so um hopefully i'll have that done before the end of the month i just need to play around with it a little bit more but i just thought you know we'd start talking about breast cancer and how important it is that you know we check our bodies um go and make the you know get the mammograms that we need to especially if you're a certain age i'm you know uh, 59 this year and i'm certainly in that category so i encourage you to look after yourself it's very very important a lot of people are relying on you and you know first of all we all know that without health it's very difficult to carry on so let's look after ourselves if we have anyone in our lives that is going through breast cancer let's support them and show them as much love as we can and just be thankful if we've never been touched by it because most of us know somebody or have a friend that knows somebody that has been touched by breast cancer so let's make each other aware of it and encourage each other to look after ourselves that is going to be our mantra and our motto for october <laughs> and then we've got some upcoming now these aren't huge but just little reminders for the next few days um our hashtag crochet through the decades cal 2024 the voting will stop tonight midnight sydney australia time so that's the um the 10th today as we said 10th of october and tomorrow being friday sometime in the afternoon so hopefully the whole world will catch up with the same time i'm going to bring you the winner of the 1960s um project and then reveal to you which person made which project so name to number will match them up and you'll know exactly who made what now in the meantime please start sending if you haven't already done so because we have received a few of the 1970s entries so if you're working on yours you've still got until the end of this month so the 31st of october and i know it is a very very busy month so i need to actually get cracking on mine because as always i've got two or three different projects in my mind and i need to decide and get started so please be mindful that that video will be coming out to you tomorrow as well and then I just realized today that it's yarn of the month coming up as well because 
next tuesday will be the 15th is that correct yes so next tuesday or wednesday i'll bring you the yarn of the month video and it is going to be a fun one i've got a few projects in mind so i need to get cracking on those as well so stay tuned for that one so well, before i see you in our next podcast next thursday there should be a couple of videos coming out to you um and I can't think of anything else at the top of my head. There are a million things going on here at the moment, but I think that they're the most pressing ones for uh, like in the next few days. Now, life, guys. Oh, as you know, I've been on school holidays and it has been a lot of fun. I've actually, being out of routine always resets me and it's been great. And I have had a total of two pyjama days because I wanted to um, tally how many I would have in total. And I did make it through two. The very first one was the first Monday of the school holidays. And this week, I think it was yesterday in actual fact. Yes, I think when Steve went to work, I said, today's going to be pyjama day. I said, no, today's Wednesday. I said, no, it's going to be pyjama day. So that's that, which has been great. And we're back to work on Monday and that's okay term four is super busy at schools it's going to be huge as we say it's going to be a big one um, there is so much happening including you know year six graduation and end of year presentations and concerts and excursions so it's just going to be crazy so you know 10 weeks will go very very quickly I'm sure now, October for our family is actually filled with birthdays as well. My son, in actual fact, celebrated his 27th birthday this week. We are so proud of him and hip hip hooray to him. Um, the whole family will be getting together this um, Sunday night for dinner. So the children and their partners will be coming for dinner. My mum couldn't wait. She went and visited him last Sunday. And in actual fact, it was her first official visit in the granny flat with the newlyweds. So that was a really nice morning tea. And this Saturday, my girlfriend Jane is celebrating her 60th birthday. So we're going to a very, very fancy reception lounge. In actual fact, that's where my son got engaged. And Jane is going to look like a princess. So if I have the opportunity to take a photo with her, I will you know, ask her if it's okay to show you. If not, I can tell you now she's going to look like an absolute princess. And we cannot wait to celebrate her as well. So that's, you know, two birthdays this weekend. And we had one on the 1st of October, our godson. My stepson is at the, on the 25th of October. Steve's brothers is on the, I think, 12th of October. My daughter's partner is on the 15th of October. And my nail artist and very good friend, Seal, is on the 22nd of October. So this month is huge when it comes to birthdays, but one at a time. This week, it's all about my son and my girlfriend, Jane. So that's pretty much life, guys. Not much to report other than how I've just been chilling. It's been wonderful, and I've really, really enjoyed the break. So I hope you're all keeping well, and I hope you're all keeping safe. I hope you've had some time to crochet because we know that resets us. Oh my goodness, it's the best time. Every night I go to bed crocheting, it is the best. So I hope that you have that opportunity to crochet when it is available to you that spare time that you've made for yourself so until i see you all very very soon take care everybody bye bye for now